This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I am super duper grateful, just so that you know. Hey, check us out on these alternative locations, please, because YouTube can be pretty sketchy. And do check us out on Twitter. We're uploading the videos directly to Twitter now. So if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, I urge you to go do that. The three platforms I'm working on growing are YouTube. I'd like to get to 250,000 subscribers. So if you would, please subscribe, like, ring the bell. I'd like to grow Rumble. We're getting closer, I hope, to 10,000 subscribers at some point. And I also want to support Elon Musk's work over at Twitter. So those are the three video platforms I'm focused on the most, although I do upload to these, uh, these other ones as well. Likewise, if you'd like to help out with the channel, you can always join Gun Guy TV crew. That is a place where you can get exclusive content you can't get anywhere else, and it doesn't cost a fortune to do it. Just go to GunGuyTVCrew.com, or you'll find it also on both Patreon and locals. All right, I talked with Dan Reed from the National Rifle Association, and I posted part of that interview before we talked about Hawaii. We also talked about Nevada. Well, Nevada is an interesting case. It was doing really well, and then it was a bit of a struggle, and now it seems to be doing better again. Dan gives us a great breakdown as to where we are with Nevada right now and where he thinks Nevada is going. Let's go talk to Dan. All right, so you mentioned Nevada. Yep. I'm, I'm a fairly old guy, and I remember Nevada being a very free place, but I, I'm not so sure. I, I can't follow them all. This is not, obviously, I'm not a full time guy doing this like you are. What's happening in the great state of Nevada? And are we, are we keeping our gun rights there? Are we losing them? Are we in a death battle for them? What's happening over there? Yeah. So, so Nevada's been, been an interesting state. Um, you've seen a big push for uh, more gun control in that state. Uh, you saw Bloomberg come in there and spend north of $20 million on a ballot measure in 2016. And, and that was really kind of the, the turning point where you really saw a lot of gun control being introduced. Uh, and especially during the, uh, the CISILAC administration for the previous four years, that's when things were, were getting signed, unfortunately. But uh, I've, I've handled Nevada for over 10 years. And the, the ballot initiative, that's when we really saw a lot of engagement from the anti-gun groups. As I mentioned, there was they tried to pass expanded background checks in the 2013 session that was ultimately vetoed. And then uh, rather than retrying in the legislature, they... Uh, put in a petition to put it on the ballot. And that became question one that was on the 2016 ballot. Uh, Bloomberg spent, I think, 25 million plus in that state. Uh, we had a lot of resources that we dumped into the state. We had offices, we did town halls, we did a lot of literature and walking. And ultimately that did pass by less than 1%, 9,000 votes approximately. Um, us being drastically outspent on that measure. And ultimately it was a flawed measure. It wasn't put into place and the legislature had to come back in, uh, in, uh, they basically gutted the statute and re-put it in because it wasn't able to be implemented based on the way they put it on the ballot. And Nevada is a point of contact state, right? So similar to California, if a, a dealer is selling a firearm, they don't contact NICS directly. They contact uh, Department of Public Safety in Nevada, or like in California, uh, you contact DOJ, right? And you have your DROS check. And so what they were doing there was because of the way Nevada's laws are written and their tax codes, if they were to use their point of contact system, it would have been a fee, which would have been a tax, and it would have changed the nature of the ballot initiative. So they tried to split the system. So dealer purchases would go to, would, you'd contact DPS and you'd pay your $25 unless you have permit. And then their private party transfers, they wanted the dealers to contact NICS directly because they said, hey, this is free. So therefore it's not a tax and therefore we don't have to run into these issues. 
and uh, what, okay. <laughs> what they fit. I know it's, it's confusing. And, and a lot of people wanted to point fingers and saying, Hey, uh, the attorney general is being an obstructionist on this. And, and in reality, it was very specific in the ballot measure that the dealer was to contact Nick's to complete this transfer. But under Nick's, that is not a requirement under federal law, right? There isn't an expanded background check for private transfers under federal law. And so they can't complete that transfer because it's not required. And so now a dealer couldn't technically contact Nick's to complete this transfer or complete the eligibility check. And so therefore it was kind of an impossible task. So it wasn't being enforced. And a lot of people said, well, we should just have them contact DPS. And it said, no, you, this is the, you know, the, the danger of putting a ballot initiative on there is it's specific. You can't go through and change it per se. Right. And so that's why the legislature had to go through. And ultimately now in Nevada for, for private party transfers, you do contact DPS, but DPS doesn't charge a fee. Just as a barometer, perhaps, or, a, you know, are we moving the needle in Nevada closer to what we want as far as our second amendment rights are concerned, or are they also doing what, well, what Chuck Michelle calls the blue resistance. <laughs> are, yeah, they, so are they resisting us like crazy or are they actually obeying Bruin and heading in the right direction? You know, Nevada's got a different flavor than California and there is uh, definitely an appetite by some legislators to pursue further restrictions on firearm ownership, use, carry, et cetera, uh, but not nearly as aggressive as California, Oregon, Washington, et cetera. And so, uh, for example, in Nevada in 2015, there was a, a phenomenal piece of legislation that we worked on and got passed and signed by Governor Sandoval that uh, enhanced preemption. So preemption had teeth. So you had true consistency in gun laws that extended castle doctrine to, to your car. Um, there, there was some self-defense Im improvements as far as uh, how you could have civil liability protections um, if there wasn't criminal action uh, on the part of someone who was engaged in self-defense. It expanded the number of states that they were recognizing permits for. So that was 2015 when uh, you saw the legislature really work to improve gun rights in the state. And, and Nevada has pretty decent laws, right? And then you saw a change in that legislature. And that's when you had the 17, 19, 21 sessions where there was an onslaught of gun control. We saw some, uh, the, the, the legislature starting to do joint hearings and limit the amount of time they were spending discussing policies uh, because uh, gun rights supporters were showing up in droves to oppose bad bills. Uh, and right now, we Governor Lombardo has been fantastic. Uh, this is his first legislative session as governor, and he vetoed three anti-gun bills about two weeks ago. And one of those actually was, was worse in California. They were looking at raising the age um, to 21 for semi-automatic uh, rifles and shotguns. And so that's something that California has done. And what California did was they raised the age for purchase, right? And they raised, and then they had uh, a, a straight ban on semi-autos. And then they said, uh, if you had a hunting license, you could purchase a long gun under 21. So there was that, that exception. Whereas Nevada, the bill that they were pursuing there banned possession of semi-auto shotguns and rifles. So an even more aggressive approach. Uh, and this was uh, despite that you have not only the Second Amendment for the United States Constitution, you have Article 1, Section 11 of the Nevada Constitution, which guarantees the right to citizens. And then actually just last fall, uh, the state passed <clears throat> another constitutional amendment called the Equal Rights Amendment, which pro prohibits discrimination based on various protected classes, um, you know, race, religion, sexual orientation, et cetera, but it also included age. And so now you had an age discrimination element of this as well. Plus you had some Ninth Circuit precedent on this uh, restriction on young adults owning commonly owned firearms. And so there was, there was a lot of problems with this bill and Governor Lombardo, he, he does not want people's rights being infringed upon. And, and he said that so much in his veto message, and he acted swiftly to veto that bill along with two other bills. So, 
Well, God bless him. I'm grateful. You've mentioned a couple of things I find interesting. One is you mentioned the a term preemption. Mm-hmm. And so I want to make sure that that I understand that. I may not, but I think what that means in the context in which you used it is that state law would preempt anything done at a local or municipal level. Correct. Is that is that what you were talking about? Yeah. So almost all states have a version of preemption. Why does not? Shockingly, right? Uh, California does, but it's a very weak preemption law. And so the idea behind firearms preemption is that you reserve the right to regulate firearms with state legislature, and that ensures consistency throughout the state. So, um, for example, in a state like Nevada, you don't drive from Bullhead City to Reno and encounter various counties, various cities that all have their own types of restrictions. And so it provides consistency. There's citizens know what the law is. Law enforcement knows what the law is. You have an equal application of the laws. And what happens in the preemption statutes is the legislature can designate to a locality an ability where they can regulate. And typically it would be like a discharge type ordinance, right? So, hey, you have a city, this is unique to your area. You can control discharge in that area. But when it comes to magazine capacity, how purchases can be, what types of, of firearms you can own, et cetera, that's off the table. So is, does this also uh, apply to things like concealed carry, open carry, those kind of things in the state correct. of Nevada? Is the same kind of a yeah. Uh, concept? Yeah. And, and Nevada had kind of an interesting history when it came to firearms preemption. The, the first preemption bill was passed in the, in the 1980s and there was a carve out for Clark County, right? And the big carve out that was there is they grandfathered in some ordinances. And if you've ever been around Nevada and you ever heard the term blue card thrown around, they had a local handgun registration scheme. It was one of, I think, one of two in the country. Um, And it was applied to handguns and that kept getting grandfathered in. It was something that we worked on for a number of years. And finally, like I mentioned, in 2015, We got rid of the grandfather clause and then provided some standing. And there was a few other issues that were going on in in Nevada with with that grandfather clause that was problematic. For example, like the city of North Las Vegas at one time had a ban on handguns and cars, right? And it was a challenging thing. I know at one time, uh, prior to my time at NRA, but they tried to pursue some litigation on it because they thought it was in conflict with the old preemption statute. And what was happening is someone might get pulled over do you have a gun in your car? They might get stopped based on that local ordinance. And then when we would go to sue, they drop the charges, right? And so now then you lose standing and the case starts, starts over or is non-existent. And so in, when we passed that enhanced preemption, it made it very clear that all these local ordinances are gone. There's no discussion and it created an opportunity for standing in the event that uh, a city, county, any sort of uh, political subdivision was, in fact, in violation. All right. The other thing that you mentioned earlier when we were talking about uh, California and Hawaii is you made a statement. You said both of them fall under the Ninth Circuit, and that might be good for us. And that's counterintuitive for a lot of gun owners who have lived under the tyranny of the Nutty Ninth for the longest time. But uh, Chuck Michelle has explained to me a number of times that the Nutty Ninth is not nearly so nutty anymore. So it is, it, am I reading correctly that the Ninth Circuit has, has a better chance of actually going our way than it used to at one time? Yeah, I think that you've had some uh, realignment of the Ninth Circuit with various federal court judges being appointed over the last several years. And so obviously the Ninth Circuit, it's a huge circuit, but the the thing about it is you do have some states that are pursuing uh, unique gun control items. And when, when there's opportunities, you may be able to file a lawsuit, you may be able to get an injunction. And since they're all sitting in the same circuit, you can have some precedent in there uh, within the ninth. And so uh, it, it allows us to focus resources. And, and in some instances where we may not be getting a favorable lower court opinion to be able to expedite things up to the Supreme Court so that we don't have to deal with them in, you know, all the various Ninth Circuit states, right? Thank you again very much for watching the entire 
segment of this interview. There is one more segment left, and in that one, we will be talking about California. So if you're in California and you're worried about that, hang in there. Dan's going to talk to us about the fight here in the state of California in the next segment, which will be posted in the next couple of days. Thank you again for all of your support. And if you get a chance and you wouldn't mind, please do support at gunguytvcrew.com or find us on Patreon or Locals. In the meantime, wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe. <laughs>